So another thing I wanted to uh, talk to you about, uh, and I think this is actually the reason I found out about you. You saw the Alex Jones interview on Joe Rogan, correct? Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, so um, from from my understanding, I read some article you posted or something like that. Yeah. Your research uh, has has delved into intravenous DMT at some point. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So basically, um, so I, w- I wrote a paper with, uh, Rick Strassman, uh, who needs no introduction, of course, um, uh, in 2016. So basically, my so I'm interested in how we might use DMT or develop DMT as this technology. Uh, you know, people often refer to DMT as a technology, like an alien technology or something like that. But they they're often kind of um, hesitant to actually start treating it like one. Uh, in that, um, you know, most people think that the, you know, the be all or all and end all when it comes to uh, using DMT is, is, is to, you know, vaporize it in a little glass pipe or something like that, which is perfectly fine. Uh, but, you know, it occurred to me if we really are going to take the idea that DMT might gate access to these orthogonal hidden realms, um, we, you know, within which there are species, you know, extremely intelligent species with with whom we, we might want to establish kind of stable communication, then we need to have a better mode of um, uh, means of communicating with them and establishing stable contact, stable entry into their space and using a little glass pipe or even a, um, you know, a bolus injection um, by IV is, is not really good enough and we need a way to kind of maintain a stable brain concentration of DMT and sort of induce somebody into that state and keep them there for as long as we want uh, and then bring them out. Um, and so this idea came to me in sort of 2015 um, that this might be possible using um, target controlled intravenous infusion, which is basically the technology used by anesthesiologists to control the level of um, anesthetic drug in, in the brain of someone who is asleep. Um, so most anesthetic drugs, believe it or not, you don't just sort of inject somebody and then put them to sleep and then, you know, they, they hopefully don't wake up for a few hours or depending on how long the operation is. But the idea is you, you, you give them a, a constant infusion of the drug, which is normally a very short acting drug, um, um, using a very, very carefully controlled um, infusion protocol that's informed by a, a mathematical model of the drug's metabolism and um, uh, distribution through the body uh, um, and then you you are able to kind of control the within a certain error range you can control the level of the anesthetic in the in the person's brain and keep them uh, in in that state um, that, that asleep or you can push them slightly deeper or you can bring them you know closer to waking or you can bring them completely out and wake them up um, and so my, my idea was that because DMT is so short acting and because as Rick Strassman showed back in the 90s there is no subjective tolerance with repeated use so there's no issue with DMT's effects becoming um, you know reducing um, over time um, my idea was that if, if given the kind of um, the pharmacological, sorry, the, the blood sampling data that, that Rick Strassman um, uh, acquired during his, you know, his early 90s study with, with his 60 patients, 60 subjects, um, that I could develop this pharmacokinetic model and actually use this target controlled intervene, intravenous infusion technology with DMT. Um, so, so basically, I, I got in contact with Rick Strasman and asked, asked for his data, and he was very, very happy to give it to me. Uh, and then, you know, I developed this model, um, and then we, we wrote this paper together and published it, and then it kind of took off, and, um, you know, people were writing about these, you know, the Matrix machine and, and you know, scientists using DMT to speak to aliens and all this kind of stuff. Uh, but actually, you know, I've never actually been directly involved in a continuous, you know, intravenous infusion study with DMT. In fact, there hasn't been one. Um, well, there was kind of a, a less well-informed study back in 2005 with ketamine and DMT, uh, but it wasn't informed by this, this kind of target controlled 
uh, technology uh, which I developed um, with Rick Strassman. So, um, so yeah, so that's that's my place in the kind of act aside from the kind of theoretical and uh, speculative ideas that, that I that I'm focused on a lot of the, most of the time. Uh, this is kind of the real kind of practical contribution to this that I've that I've made. Yeah.